Hello and welcome. My name is Richard Halkett, and I'm the director of our worldwide innovation programs here at AWS. I am joined by Rayford Davis, who leads our business in the southeast of the United States, and who has deep experience in working backwards with multiple customers from many different industries. When we talk about Amazon's approach to innovation, we discuss four interlocking elements that drive how we innovate. One of those is called mechanisms, and foremost amongst those, from an innovation point of view at least, is working backwards. Today, Rayford and I will dive deeply into working backwards, giving you a sense of how it works and how it may be helpful to you as you seek to identify new, powerful innovations for your customers. Amazon operates a broad range of businesses in multiple highly competitive domains. We started with e-commerce retail, books, moving to DVDs and CDs, expanding into multiple categories of products delivered globally. We now have over 175 tools and services across AWS to leverage the cloud for compute, storage, AIML, and much more. We have a hardware devices business that began with the Kindle, e-ink, and tablets, the Echo family and Alexa, Fire TV, and home security devices. We deliver streaming content, Amazon Video, original content with Studio, and streaming channels with Twitch. We're in consumables, food and grocery retail, Whole Foods, services like Amazon Fresh and Prime Now. And we're in physical retail with Amazon Go, Amazon Bookstores, and our four-star stores. And these represent such a wide range of businesses that it may make you wonder why and how Amazon got involved in each one. Well, it starts with how we innovate on behalf of customers, no matter what their needs are or where they are. At Amazon, we innovate by starting with the customer and working backwards. We dive deeply to understand our customers and prospective customers, what they need or want, where they have frustration or pain in their life. It's not only about being close to customers and asking them what they want, but deeply understanding their situation, their context, uncovering durable needs, opportunities, and pain points, and then working backwards to invent on their behalf. Amazon Go is a great example. That entire business was not driven by getting into the physical grocery space as much as it was about simply trying to address a persistent and shared customer problem. Is there a way to remove the pain and time of having to wait in line to check out when you've been to a grocery store? Now, there are many different ways in which you could choose to innovate. You can focus on competitors, you could focus on new technologies, you could innovate around business models, and there are many, many more. We've chosen to focus our business around obsessive customer focus. And why is that? Well, here is what Jeff wrote in his 2016 shareholder letter. There are many advantages to a customer-centric approach, but here's the big one. Customers are always beautifully, wonderfully dissatisfied, even when they report being happy and business is great. Even when they don't know it yet, customers want something better, and your desire to delight customers will drive you to invent on their behalf. So putting the customer at the center of everything we do provides truly endless ideas and inspiration to innovate. By inventing on behalf of customers, we don't build technology for technology's sake or invent in isolation. And the result of starting with customers and their durable needs opens us up to explore and innovate in many more areas than we may have otherwise thought about. So here are the four elements around Amazon's approach to innovation that I referred to earlier. When people ask us to explain this, we talk about our culture, we talk about customer obsession, about hiring builders, and about supporting them with a belief system that's encoded in many places, including in our leadership principles. We talk about mechanisms, which I'll talk about later. We talk about architecture, which is the way in which we support our builders with a structure and an architecture that supports rapid experimentation, growth, and change. And we talk about our organization, which is our small, empowered teams led by single-threaded leaders who own what it is that they create. But let's talk about mechanisms. So a mechanism has a very specific meaning inside Amazon. Jeff once delivered a presentation in which he stated, often 
When we find a recurring problem, something that happens over and over again, we pull the team together, ask them to try harder, do better. Essentially, we ask for good intentions. This rarely works. When you're asking for good intentions, you are not asking for a change because people already had good intentions. But if good intentions don't work, what does? Mechanisms work. So that was Jeff's explanation. Now, a mechanism is a complete process. It's a virtuous circle that reinforces and improves itself as it operates. To begin with, we normally build a tool, a soft piece of software or a process. We drive adoption of that tool and we inspect the results to see if we're having the impact that we intended. We then improve the mechanism and go around the cycle again. Now, there are many different types of mechanisms at Amazon aimed at all sorts of challenges and opportunities that we face. They allow us to scale and they help our leaders operate beyond their direct line of sight in a business that's rapidly growing and diversifying. Some examples include the adoption of the Andon cord to allow frontline customer service agents to rapidly remove product information that's defective from our website. And also the Bar Razor program that helps us hire the very best people, turning the intention of wanting to hire great people into a consistent output by investing in a specific mechanism to do just that. But in the context of innovation, the hallmark mechanism we have to consistently drive customer-centric innovation and embed it in our business is working backwards. Now, every customer-facing product or service developed across Amazon started and uses the working backwards mechanism. We use it to make sure we are building the right thing for customers and that we are customer obsessed right from the very beginning all the way through the development of any idea. The central artifact of working backwards is what we call a working backwards document, commonly referred to as a PRFAQ. This document includes three elements, a press release, the PR, a frequently asked questions document, the FAQ, and a visuals representation of what the customer experience looks like and how it will change. I'll now pass you to Rayford to talk us through the details of each step of this mechanism. Thank you, Richard. Now in the working backwards process, we always start with the customer. And whether a business to consumer or business to business context, we identify an individual for whom we are innovating. This can be a specific role, title, or targeted user profile. What we want to understand is who is the individual that has a challenge that requires an innovation for the challenge to be solved? What time of day does this challenge occur? Where are they when this challenge occurs? What do they have that's a pain or frustration in their life that requires this need? And is this need an emotional need or a functional need? In AWS, around 95% of the features we develop come directly from hearing from customers. The other 10% comes from being close enough to customers that we can invent on their behalf when they don't or can't articulate what they need. However, in being customer obsessed, we can give ourselves the best chance of understanding the need before we start to build the innovation. Whenever innovators start a process, their brains start to generate solutions as soon as the problem is identified. However, the working backwards process helps us test these initial ideas more deeply to cultivate the best solutions. We start with these five questions before we draft the PR FAQ. We teach Amazonians to wrestle with these questions as they start thinking about new ideas. Now these questions are deceptively simple. An innovator could spend five minutes or five months to answer these questions. The amount of time is up to you, but we would suggest you use these questions to refine your thinking. When you have answered these questions, then you can start your PR FAQ, as those answers will capture many of the concepts that will be addressed in the Working Backwards document. As discussed, the central artifact of the Working Backwards process is a Working Backwards document that includes a press release, a set of FAQs, and visuals. Let's walk through each of these elements separately. First, let's start with the press release. The press release is a one-page narrative describing a new product or service using customer-centric language. With the press release, we leap into the future and imagine how a customer feels and what they may say about a new idea before we write a single line of code. 
Limiting the press release to just one page forces us to be crisp on how we describe this new product. It is often harder to write less than to write more, as we have to make choices about what is important and must remain in the document. In the press release, we communicate who the customer is, what the problem customer faces, and describe the solution, highlighting the innovation's most important benefit. We also include a fictional quote from a fictional customer, which articulates their experience after engaging with this new innovation. This forces us to put ourselves in the mind of the customer and think about how they would describe the benefits and value around the launch of the new product or service. The second element of the Working Backwards document are the frequently asked questions. While the PR is one page, the FAQs could be many pages. This is where we dive into the details of the proposed product or service. We include two types of FAQs, customer and internal. Customer FAQs are questions that we anticipate a customer may ask. How much does it cost? Where can I buy it? What happens if it breaks or if I need support? In addition to these customer FAQs, we also include FAQs internal stakeholders may ask. Internal stakeholders are all of the teams and function in your organizations needed to bring the innovation to life. Examples of internal FAQs include questions like, why do we believe the service will be successful? What differentiates the solution from other available solutions? In what use cases would customers not want to use the service and why? How much would it cost? Does it integrate with legacy? Early drafts will not, only, will not necessarily have answers to all FAQs. In the innovation process, it is sometimes more important to know which questions we need to answer as having the answer up front. Visuals are the third part of a working backwards document and exist to communicate the customer experience where words cannot. There are many types of visuals, including storyboards, wireframes, technical architecture diagrams, and more. This practice doesn't require being a great visual artist. Rather, it's meant to help visually communicate the innovation expressed in the press release and FAQs. A helpful axiom is the fidelity of the visuals to match the maturity of the idea. This means that early on, when an idea is rough, the visuals should also be rough. As we clarify thinking and flesh out details in the press release and FAQs, the fidelity of the visuals should increase. Visuals should communicate the customer experience so that when combined with the press release and FAQs, a reader comes away with a clear understanding of what the pro proposed product or service is. Now that we've walked through the working backwards document, please remember the goal is not to create a document. That's just an output of the process. The working backwards doc is used as a conversation starter. The first draft is never even close to perfect, but it allows the team to have a starting point. And with every iteration or review, the document becomes clearer and the idea stronger. With the document, we discuss, debate, and ask questions. Is this the right solution? How else could we do this? Should this idea be bigger? It is through this iteration, captured in iterating on the Working Backwards document, that we achieve clarity and focus, that we make the highest quality decisions in the innovation process, and that we ensure we're in building the right innovation for customers. Back to you, Richard. Thank you, Rayford. I've used and studied multiple innovation methodologies over my career. When I reflect on working backwards and its signature characteristics, I come up with five. First of all, it's inherent, obsessive customer centricity, beginning with the customer and consistently keeping the customer in mind through every step of the process. Secondly, the fact that it is front loaded, the amount of thought and time and effort and writing and review that we put in to developing an idea well before we put finger to keyboard or actually develop or deploy anything. Thirdly, it's iterative nature, the way in which you don't start with the questions, move to the press release, onto the FAQs and the visuals, then review. You go back around each time improving. It may well be that those reviews, as they're meant to, actually cause you to reflect back on the questions on the press release itself and certainly on the FAQs. So it's iterative and it improves every time. That's the mechanistic component that I referred to earlier on. It's fast paced. We really do try to move quickly between these steps. 
we believe that there is a benefit to fast action and moving forward rapidly in business. And it's biased for action. So what we produce for a press release and an FAQ document and the visuals is ready when we believe we've identified the right idea, the right components, the next way to delight our customers, then it means that we're actually ready to go ahead to experiment, to build, and then to rapidly scale, or alternatively, learn that the idea wasn't the right one in the first place. When we do this, we often find that we get remarkable results. As always with innovation, which is an inherently risky process, not every idea proceeds, but we know why we want to do it or why we don't. We hope you've enjoyed this deeper dive into working backwards. As Rayford said, you can do this in a short time or over a long period, and we tend to do both, iterating and improving our ideas at every turn. This is a bit like riding a bike though. It's really hard to do it while standing still. So if you're interested, I suggest you have a go and see where it takes you. I wanna thank you for watching and taking the time to go through this dive deep on working backwards uh, session. We've got a series of other sessions that are available. Um, you can see the list here. So we've got the overview of Amazon's culture of innovation that I referred to. Um, we've got innovating with Amazon, which gives examples of uh, customers who've been through uh, processes with Amazon Teams to actually develop new products and services. We've got a series of what we call learning from Amazon discussions that dive deeply into Amazon.com's experience um, with different technologies and AWS technologies. So an overview with the evolution and AWS strategy, then looking at um, use of AI ML um, as well in particular, um, this session on working backwards, and then uh, a dedicated session on two pizza teams um, and how we organize for uh, innovation and drive development of new ideas. And then finally, we've got a session specifically focused on societal challenges and how we've been using Working Backwards and the Digital Innovation Program in the public sector. So to further explore, please go to those sessions. And if you're interested in learning more, please contact your AWS account team. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.